Hi, today I want to talk a little bit about Brifo's Law, something I think that every man should know about, extremely, extremely important, and um, much of the information you can just find on a basically one page worth uh, of a website I'm posting. It's very, very informative. It's very concise. Um, all the information is there. I'm probably just going to expand a little bit on it, and I have no illusions that I'm going to add a tremendous amount to it, but I think by posting a video that's actually talking specifically about this, it could be helpful. And as I said, uh, all men should know about it. It's uh, probably, the, when dealing with women, the single most important thing you can know is a man. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm going to delve into this a bit. Now, uh, as you can see on the website, Briefall was a uh, late 19th century, uh, early mid 20th century guy who uh, was primarily a novelist, but he, as well as a, a surgeon, a medical doctor. But he also engaged in things like social anthropology and uh, writing on sociology in general. And um, he famously said, well, famously, I don't know how famous it is, to be quite honest, but he did say that Briefo's Law states quite, I'll read it out loud right off the website, the female, not the male, determines all the conditions of the animal family. Where the female can derive no benefit from associ association with the male, no such association takes place. And um, the guy who runs the blog has added some very, very nice corollaries, in my opinion. One, corollary one, past benefit provided by the male does not provide for continued or future association. Corollary two, any agreement where the male provides a current benefit in return for a promise of future association is null and void as soon as the male has provided the benefit. See corollary one. Three, a promise of future benefit has limited influence on current slash future association with the influence inversely proportionate to the length of time until the benefit will be given and directly proportionate to the degree to which the female trusts the male. Um, and then in brackets, which is not bloody likely. This is really important. I'm going to talk a little about these corollaries the guy has come up with. Well, pa past benefit provided by the male does not provide for continued or future association is very important. Um, in my previous video and a few other times, you know, we've talked about honor being primarily the province of the male. Well, this would be a uh, good illustration of that, in my opinion, because um, we as men have a uh, concept of commitment of debt. If someone, even if I don't like the person, if someone does something for me, I do feel in some sense obligated to discharge, at the very least discharge that debt. The female uh, feels no such compunction. That means that even if a male has provided for her well-being for 10 years, um, and for whatever reasons, perhaps he falls ill, or he has an injury, or it doesn't matter what the reasons are, although certainly being ill and injured is a good reason, would be a logical reason, um, and sure to elicit no sympathy or empathy on the part of the female, that aside, she, won't, um, she will not continue her association with it. Why? Because he's no longer providing the benefit. So that, that's, a, I think, corollary one probably is the most important one to stress, that this idea that just because you've taken care of or you've been nice or kind to your partner or woman doesn't mean she's going to regard that as a, uh, a uh, worthwhile thing in, in, in terms of discharging debt or in terms of uh, paying you back, in terms of kindness or whatever. Of course, the irony is how often do we hear, oh, I gave him the best years of my life. And so women do have that expectation, despite themselves not practicing it. Um, agreement number two, uh, so that's past benefit provided by the male, does not provide for continued or future association. Corollary two, any agreement where the male provides a current benefit in return for a promise of future association is null and void as soon as the male has provided the benefit, which is essentially a reinforcement of one. He says it himself. That's right. So if you are providing a current benefit with the expectation that um, that you'll be treated well or get whatever it is you, you might desire from the one most likely sex, um, access to the vagina in, in the future because you're, do, you're providing a service or a benefit now, um, there is no connection between the two. They don't, they don't link up, unfortunately. Um, you need to continue providing that benefit, in theory, indefinitely, although you know, it's another issue. And finally, three, a promise of future benefit has limited influence on current future association. 
with the influence inversely proportionate to the length of time until benefit will be given and directly proportionate to the degree to which the female trusts the male. Somewhat more complicated. Um, so what he's saying here is that a woman who sees a potential benefit in the future will act only to a limited uh, extent uh, based on her own perception of how, how, how much that benefit is within reach um, and how much she quote unquote trusts the male. So, I mean, I'm not going to give a specific uh, temporal indication, but so let, let's say if, if, if a woman sees a benefit six months down the line, that might be a worthwhile investment of her time and energy. However, if the benefit is six years down the line, it might not be. Now, on the other hand, if it's look, if she's looking at you know, say on ten million dollars, um, what I mean, the famous Kobe Bryant's uh, not 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 really a tangent. The story apparently, from what I heard, um, I'm not a huge basketball fan or math sports fan in general, but is that um, the the wife stuck around the husband on, on the advice of the mother primarily for the purpose of being able to uh, rake it in during the divorce, um, the, the, mo the mother had advised the daughter to maintain the relationship slash marriage um, in order to uh, garner his wealth. So that would be sort of a long-term projection of association for the sake of benefit. Um, so that's all relative from, uh, based on the perspective of the uh, of a female who's choosing to associate with the male. Um, and, you know, the, the, Briefall is right in talking about the animal family. We are animals, and, and we see it time and time again. Females shoot the lion. Male peacocks look ridiculous and put themselves at danger and uh, in danger and uh, in order to attract females and so on and so forth. But the woman, the female, chooses. There's some more very interesting information about the uh, idea that Thai women are different. And the main point of this guy's summary is that... Um, W women are universal in their adherence to Briefo's law. Where Briefo's law uh, does differ, it's only in the degrees, the specific degrees which an individual woman, and women are actually individuals, I've never denied that, will display this behavior. So it's quite possible, I will concede that, that Briefo's law um, is... I'm just going to make up some percentages. There's only 10% in effect in one woman, and then 95% in another, and 100 in another, and so on and so forth. But rest assured, and do not doubt, that a woman will only associate with a male based on the benefit she potentially sees in him. Um, and I'll talk about those specific, specific benefits in a bit. Um, but he goes on to, to stress that uh, all women associate with any man only so long as they derive benefit from the association, this cannot be stated too many times. Um, and he goes on to mention some statistics in the UK regarding hypergamy. Um, and you can read this all for yourself. I don't want to talk too much about that. Uh, it's kind of funny, the guy apparently married four times. And he has a sense of humor. He says, marriage number four, so I'm a slow learner. But the point he's trying to make, and I'm trying to make, is that... Um, the, 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 the benefit issue is the most important thing. He also talks about things we've talked about recently. Uh, he talks about, you know, he says, loyalty, honor, gratitude, and duty are male values that we men project on women, but which very few to no women actually possess. We, we, differ, uh, we differ slightly. He thinks it's drummed into us by society and culture. I think it's inherent to us and accelerated and exacerbated by society. Um, and women, I mean, I think one of my posters, uh, I forgot his name and you'll forgive me, uh, I used to read a fair bit of Schopenhauer and Schopenhauer did in fact say that women are there for the species, they, they do not value individual lives and uh, you know, so that, that does make sense. Uh, the, he also goes on to say, so do not expect that the woman in your life will be grateful and sacrifice for you when you can no longer provide for her and hers. And make no mistake, you will never, you have never been and never will be part of what is hers. What are hers will be her first herself, 
then her biological children, then her parents, then her siblings, and then the rest of her blood relatives. The biological imperative has always been to extend her bloodline. It stops there and it always will. This is true everywhere in the world. Get over it. This is this can be saddening, and indeed it is, to me at least. Um, but these are the facts, unfortunately. That is how the female operates. I want to talk a little about this concept of benefit. Because uh, inevitably, men will get involved with, in relationships. Not everyone is a man going his own way, and not everyone has either temporarily, in my case, or permanently renounced uh, the relationship as a concept. But the problem, the problem people think benefit, they immediately think money. And certainly that would be a very tangible, very uh, solid way of looking at the exchange of goods, right? Because a relationship, according to Brifo's law, and you don't even need that to see that, is simply a business transaction. Most of the time the man is paying for uh, sex and, and perhaps access to um, reproduction in exchange for his financial uh, resources, money, um, things he can buy, and level of comfort provided to the woman. But it can be a lot more subtle. Um, and this is something that men need to be aware of. So for example, um, uh, Bob, imaginary man, is in a relationship and he, the, the woman doesn't seem to be particularly interested in the, uh, the money he may or may not have. Let's say he doesn't have a lot of money. So, oh, you know, she's not interested in my money, she's a good woman. There, there is something else going on. There might be some other benefit. Who knows? It could be really anything. He might have a huge cock. She might, she might enjoy the sex with him. She might simply enjoy the attention. This is very common. Lavished upon her by Bob. She might enjoy his servitude, his willingness to um, essentially uh, get down on the knees and, uh, and take it up the ass, uh, metaphorically speaking. So there are a lot of ways to interpret benefit. Benefit does need not necessarily be just money. Uh, that should be clear. And it's, it's often, um, I mention this, and I want to stress this, because so many men are willing to overlook that. Oh, she's not into my money, so she's not a superficial or person or what have you. At the end of the day, she will, she will be looking for some kind of benefit. In some ways, the financial transaction benefit is the most transparent and the easiest to deal with. Um, if you, if, if men, if a man chooses to enter into a relationship with a woman and it's very clear cut what the, um, st what's stipulated in the contract, whether, I mean, obviously it's not officially signed, but it's a business transaction, the business contract, and, and the, the primarily, the, the primary stipulation is one of financial services, then that's pretty, uh, cut and, uh, cut and dry. If it's more something like some sort of emotional, vague, vague emotional feeling that you're giving to the female, or the way, you know, you're, she might enjoy sex with you, or maybe it's even, you know, the artwork she, that, you know, that she enjoys that you produce. At some point in time, she won't like it anymore, so the benefit ends. Um, finally, in some cases, in my observation, also from my own relationships, I've never been wealthy, so that's never been the uh, primary benefit-seeking uh, issue in terms of the women I've dated. Not only the women just don't know specifically, but rest assured they are looking for some kind of benefit. Um, and they will cancel the relationship as soon as they have the feeling, however vague it might be, that whatever benefit they may or may not have been cognizant of uh, has uh, ceased to be. Just wanted to get that out there. That's very important. So we, to not always um, assume benefit is financial. Oftentimes it is. So. I'm not going to give people advice. I don't do that. Uh, Al Pacino's character, a.k.a. Satan in, uh, the, in Devil's Advocate, which I think is quite a good film, very well done, um, highly underrated, quite famously said, you know, the worst advice is advice. But what I would suggest, what I think might be wise, is if a man chooses to enter into a relationship or, a, well, let's just say relationship, marriage is, you know, we know what marriage is about, then um, the man should prior to entering the relationship, be aware of what the benefit is to the female. Once again, if it's cut and dry, if it's just an issue of finances, so let's say the man has money, then it's, it's pretty clear what the female is, is, uh, is looking for. Um, and uh, consequently, as long as he can provide for her financially, he'll have uh, continued, most likely continued access to her vagina or whatever else he might seek from her. 
much more dangerous it is for 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 men who perhaps are not wealthy or at least hide their wealth because the, the female will be looking for something else and it really can range from anything i mean it could be the cool pictures you draw in your writings um your servitude the slavish attention you lavish on her um maybe you're an amazing cook i actually <laughs> it sounds odd i actually knew a guy who had a relationship with a uh, with a female and she would constantly praise him. He was a very, very talented cook. Um, he wasn't a professional, but, I mean, he could have easily been just, I mean, he's very good. I tasted this food. Very good. She was together, I mean, I, I together with him for uh, the cooking, pretty much. She eventually dumped him for a man with more money. So th there's another uh, thing at play that sometimes some, one benefit will outweigh the other. So the cooking was really good, but the, the other man's money was better. Um, that's another issue that, that, that's important to stress, that in some cases, um, one benefit seen in one man outweighs the other, um, or it could be a combination of benefits. Remember, women are always looking for one leg up. They're looking for a way to uh, improve their situations. And so they will take, they will, if they see a man who can provide a better benefit, rest assured you will be chucked out the door, out the window. There's no doubt about that. Um, you're, you, I, this cannot be stressed enough, and I apologize if it's repetitive. Remember, you have no humanity, no personhood in the eyes of a woman. You are merely a tool. You are merely a utility. That is your only purpose, is to serve uh, her interests. And she is willing to give you sex in return, um, perhaps some, mother, some feigned motherly uh, sense of comfort at, at, at best, um, but all those quote-unquote gifts, or rather the services rendered for the contract, will cease to be um, once she finds someone else who can provide a better benefit. Or, as in a previous video I talked about, she finds someone uh, who can provide one benefit whilst maintaining the benefit with you. So maybe you're a great cook and a quote-unquote loving, nice guy, but she found some guy with a huge cock that she, who's, that she loves to sex with. So she'll, she'll, she'll pool her resources there and enjoy both. Uh, maybe she'll even cuckle. Maybe she'll have children with that guy, and you take care of them because you're the good cook and you're the good father, potentially, if you're not a father, but you see my point. <laughs> this is very important. Um, so the thing that needs to be stressed over and over and over again is that a relationship with a woman is nothing else than a business contract, a, a transaction. Um, you will provide a service, a benefit, and usually it's much greater, the, 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 the level of uh, the proportion of services rendered by the man tends to be much greater than what the woman gives back, because most of the time the woman simply spreads her legs, that's the service that she renders. That, um, you know, once again, commensurate compensation, it's almost never commensurate compensation. So that's something to really, uh, that's food for thought. Um, but Brivo's law needs to be uh, borne in mind by every every man, every man walking on the earth, because regardless of the degree of the manifestation of Brivo's law in female behavior, it will always be there. And yes, some women, there are some women with a with a shred of conscience. There, those might be women with maybe slightly less uh, of a tendency to live out Brivo's law. But that will always be there. Um, I, I'll give credit, for example, to my last ex, uh, who admitted to me that she cheated and, and felt rather bad about it. Um, she's also very young, mind you. She's 23 now. Um, but it, it just goes to show that uh, when the benefit is no longer there, they, they will jettison you. And I think as, as she gets older, as is just my prediction, I don't have contact with her anymore, which is good thing she, she will uh, you know, throw off uh, the last shreds of ethics and what have you and she will fully evolve into someone who's much more uh, likely to adhere to all of the tenets of, or the all of the content of brief law just a matter of time really but um no that's pretty much what I had to say it's 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 and, and of course, he's mentioned in the article that there are no exceptions. Yes, culture can mitigate certain things. And um, so, for example, culture can, can extend or can 
increase the the extent of of, of how much prefrontal law weighs in on a female or lessen that, but that will always be there. Um, and culturally, let's just look at the United States. I mean, this is prefrontal law run mad. I, I don't think the women here are running a hundred percent here. I'm not in the states where, where I was. Are running a hundred percent of prefrontal law. I think they're running. 120 percent and I'm being generous um, you might have another culture Korean culture where it might only be 50 or 70 percent because there are some constraints uh, placed on the women to, to a certain extent and uh, so I urge my viewers and anyone else who might come across this to just really familiarize yourself with brief folks law it's very it's, it's the single most important thing you can read about women or learn about women and remember, if you choose to enter into some kind of relationship, be it a marriage or a normal, quote-unquote, normal relationship, be very aware of the benefits you are providing to her. If the benefits are more concrete, well, uh, that's, that's easier in a lot of ways, more transparent. If they're vague and nebulous, that's going to be a lot uh, trickier. Um, and always be aware that a woman will ditch you uh, near, nearly uh, in a moment's, at a moment's notice if she sees someone who either provide more benefit of the same or multiple benefits, um, which of course would out outstrip the benefits you provide that you provide to her. And um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. But it's very, very familiar that we all familiarize, our, uh, very important that we all familiarize ourselves with uh, people's law. Very, very important. And I, and I hope other uh, MRAs and men going their own way mention this. It's very, 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 very important. Cannot stress this enough. Thanks for watching.